Hello everyone, Hadi Family Brit here again. And we are going to start this with a quick tidbit. So do you know that the Scrum method we use for our development is a part of a larger framework called Agile Methodology? And do you know that the Agile Methodology has other framework as well or other methods as well? Um, another popular one is the Kaban Methodology, which focus mainly on the developer's uh, comfortability. So if you know, while Scrum kinds of focus on ensuring you push a new feature quickly, Kaban ensures that you do the best you can do while still maintaining the whole process. So that's just by the way. Maybe that's a tidbit. However, I think we should incorporate one of that into what we are trying to build. So yeah, Agile methodology it is. Not really focusing on anyone to be specific. And based on that, the whole idea about Agile methodology is that you build things in a gradual manner. You build things as a feature. And if you understand what that means is you pick the little, you build it and move to the next. And on that note, we are going to be building a bit of a feature to our system. So just to continue from where we left off, we are meant to have a payment gateway, a settlement system, and so on. But remember, before you actually need a settlement system, then you must be able to achieve an internal transfer first. So that's where we want to start. We want to be able to send money internally, okay? So if you are conversant with the way you send your money, I'm pretty sure before you can send money, you need to enter the account number of the accounts you are sending to. So yeah, that's the feature we'll be working on today. So if you've been following Fingrid, you realize that we have our accounts. However, they don't have an account number, which is meant to uniquely map an account. So yeah, let's create an account number for our system and make it available on the front end so that in the next episode, we can actually implement the send functionality. So I'll go back to my VS Code screen now. So this is where we left off uh, in the last episode. This is our backend still just like it is. Um, again, if you've not shared thing grids, I would recommend you do that. It's a prerequisite for this. So let me start Docker so that we can access our database. So give it a minute to start up. All right, so our Postgres service is up and running. And now let's focus on what we intend to do. So if we come back to our DB and check through our migrations, you see that we have a migration for account setup. And we didn't hear we created our account. So what we are trying to add now is a new feature. And as a result of that, we are making a new migration. So if we come back to our make file, we can see how to create a new migration. And let's do that. So we have make C underscore M. And the name of the migration would be add account number. All right, so that's up, as you can see. So we have the add account number down and up. So for the up version, also what we are doing is to kind of enable us understand um, SQL better because I'm pretty sure most of us work with ORM and ORM kinds of remove SQL entirely from the scope. So I think this is also a good way to kind of get familiarized with SQL. So yeah, we want to adjust our account table. So let's take a look at the account up. We have this. So now back to the account number up. So we are going to have author table accounts. Then add colon account underscore number. By the way, I have um, copilot um, enabled. So that's why you ask. You can see the suggestions, but ignore that. Maybe it can make our work faster, but I believe we get the idea. So yeah, this is going to be a Vasha. And it's going to be null. And the reason why it's going to be null is because we have existing data already. And the account number is going to be generated by us. So what that means is we can create an account and then add the account number to it. So yeah, we have maybe... 20 or 11, and account number should be 10 digits according to my country. But I will add an extra one just for error sake. And 
not null will be removed, it can be null. However, we can make this unique because an account number should be unique to an account. Okay, so that's what we need to do for the migration up. Now let's come down to the migration down. So here we're going to have alter table accounts again. Then we have drop column account number. That's all we have to do. So we save. Okay. So before we actually run this migration, let's pull up um, PG Admin to see what our initial migration looks like. So we have PG Admin. All right, so this is the Fingred DB and here is the accounts table. So remember, we have accounts available already. That's what we've been testing all this well. So let me pull up the rows. So we have these two accounts in our account, both belongs to me. Now we want to add a new column to this. And now we've set up the migrate up and down. All we have to do now is come back to the make file and see how to migrate up. So the command for that is this. So we can have make and underscore up. All right, so as you can see, this was successful. So let's come back to PG admin. Let's run this again. So now we have the account number field, which at the moment it's null. Okay, that's what we defined makes sense. However, I want you to do also is to test if your down operation is actually working. And to effect the down operation, we have the make down, then we specify the count. The count indicates how many times we should go down. So yeah, once, because that's just the last one we did. So we can have make M underscore down. There we have the count equals to one. So it's going to remove the last um, of migration. Yep, as you can see, we have this. And if we come back to our PG admin, run, run this again, and we can see that the migration is out. So our migrations are okay. I think we are good on that note. So let me make it up again and we have the account number back. So that's the first part. Because we are working with SQLC, we need to update our SQLC code. Again, FinGrid series is a prerequisite for this. So most of what we are doing now, we've done it in the past and I'll probably not go back to the old flow again. So to update our SQLC, we do make SQLC. And yeah, that is going to update our SQLC. As you can see, there are some changes here. So if you come down to the accounts, you see that the account number has been added. And if you come back to the models, the account now has the account number, which is what we want. That's okay. So yeah, that's for that. So before we actually get into creating our account and adding it to the account we have, we will need to update the existing accounts to also have an account number because an account number is needed. So on that note, we are going to need some scripts. So based on that, I'm going to close this. I'm going to create a new folder called scripts. Like that. And here we are going to have a new file called uh, updates or rather add accounts numbers dot go okay so we're going to create a group function to add our account numbers here so that's about that however how do we want to even create an account number in the first place so the way i see to create an account number would be to have a starter for each account time okay so if it's a naira account then the account number will start with a one if it's a dollar account, then it's going to start with a two and we can keep incrementing based on the type of currency we have. And that's about that. And also we want to add the account ID as part of the account number and the rest will be the active time information. So that's a mouthful. Actually, let's come down to the utils and create a function to generate an account number. So here we're going to have fun. Generate account number. 
So this is going to take in the user ID. So we can have or rather account ID. Account ID is going to be of in 64, I believe. And we are expected to return a string or an error here. Okay, okay. Aside from the account number, it's also going to take the currency here. We have the currency. And the currency is going to be of type currency. Like that. So do we actually have a type currency? I guess not. Let's verify. Nope, we don't have a type currency. And actually, I think we shouldn't really bother about having a type currency because coming from the database, we don't have a type currency. What we have is going to be a string anyways. So yeah, let's return it to be a string. However, we need to update our currency flow to reflect what we are trying to do. So currently, we have this as how we maintain or manage our currency. So I want to adjust this a little bit more. So here I can have a type currency and it's going to be a struct. So the struct is going to contain the code like this. Then it's going to contain the name. Then it's going to contain the starter value. So I'll just call this starter. And the starter is going to be and ain't maybe a string anyways. Let's just make it a strange. Yes, a starter. Okay. So now, based on this, we want to adjust this a little bit. Actually, maybe a code will not be necessary in this case again. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, let's leave it there. Let's just continue. So here we're going to have currency. So now we've changed this to currency. And our map key is still strange. So this is still going to be maintained. So now we can come here and have this as code USD, name United States dollar, then the starter. So the starter, I want it to be for USD to be two. Then we do the same thing for NGN. Code is NGN, name is Nigeria Nera, and the starter is going to be one for this. Then next we have the GBP. The name is GBP, the, na the code is GBP rather, the name is British Stalin, then the starter is theory. So we've updated this, which reflects what we want. And our initial settings should still not change because our initial setting is checking if the currency exists. So we are checking for this, we should still be valid, okay? So now coming back to our generate account, we want to confirm if the currency exists. So we can have this as config, comma, okay. Then is equals to currency into currency. So here we can check if it is not okay, then we can return an empty string, then an error telling that the currency we provided is not available. Then we can get the starter from that, okay? So another thing we need is the time information. So we can say current time in the representation. So let's have the current time, active time, which is equals to time dot noun formatted in this format. So it's going to return everything in this format. Okay. Then also we have the account number, which is this. So what we want to do, like I said, the starter is going to be the start of our account number. The account number is going to be the next. So that means we need the value or the length of these two items. And we have to remove it from what we have within our time.now to actually get the account number. So we can say initial, initial value into yeah that so fmt dot spf so we have spf percent s for the starter because the starter is a string and percent d 
for the account ID. So here we can have the starter and the account ID. So that's the initial. So I believe this should actually be in a string. So let's 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 put this in a string. Okay, so that's better. So the next thing we want to do is we want to remove what we have within the initial value from the active type. So here we can just add the comments, remove, or better still, let's say. So actually, we can just remove what we have now from the active time. Instead, we want to remove it from 10. 10 is the standard account number we want to have. So let's just have a comment. Account number is, should be 10 in length. Like that. So now we can say reminder equals to 10 minus length of initial value. So for instance, if our account ID has become so big that maybe we don't have a reminder again, so we can check if reminder is greater than zero. So that's when we actually want to do this. So if reminder is greater than zero, then we want to have the final value. So this is going to be equals to later on because we need to add something. So we can say final value initially equals to an empty string. So now the final value is going to be the active time minus the reminder. So we can have active time into reminder. Yeah, so let's define reminder because we've not. So yeah, this is the final value. And now we can now have the account number across to this. So all we need now is just to string the initial value because that's going to be the starter and the final value. So we can return the account number and nil for the error. So our function to generate account number seems to be correct. However, one thing to do is to have a test to run this, but I will ignore that we are going to actually test manually. So let's come back to this. And this is going to be package scripts. Then we are going to have fun add account numbers like this. So for now, we just want to test the account number. So let's assume, so let's say we have ACC or let's just call it ACC equals to utils dot generate account number. And this we are going to pass in the account ID. Let's assume we have one. Then the currency, we have NGN. So this is expecting two things. So both the account and an error. So here we can check if error is not nil, then we can panic and return the error. Else we can have fmt.printl accounts. Okay. So to test this, we can come back to our main function. That is the main.go file. We can comment this out for now. And here we can have add or other scripts dot add account number. So let's comment this out as well. Okay, so we have that and let's test if this is running. So we have clear and we have um, go run main dot bro. All right, so we have this and let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have our account number generator working. So the next thing we want to do is actually create 
a script to be able to assign an account number to the existing account. So here we are going to recreate our connection just like we did within the API. So let me get the connection from the API. So new server, it takes in the ERV path. So we're going to pass the same thing here. So this is going to take in the ERV path as well. Then we are going to get this up to the connection side. So we are going to have all this. So we can remove this or, or others. We are going to need it anyway. So let's just have this here. So we have the connection here. This is the connection. So we need to import um, SQL. Then also, because we are going to be using the Postgres driver, if you remember, we need to also import that Postgres uh, information. And if we come here, here is what we need to do because we won't be using the dependency directly. We added the underscore in front of it. So if we don't have it, then it's going to complain that the Postgres driver is not available, something like that. So now that we have the connection, let's get the accounts. So here we can do accounts, eight accounts like this, comma arrow. Then we have con.query into select star. But do we need star actually? I think all we need from here is the ID and currency, which makes sense. So select ID from a currency from accounts where account number is null. So this is what we want. Then we can check for error. So if error is nil, then we print this error. So the reason why we are going through this route of doing a direct query is because we are trying to process a huge information. So currently all the accounts we have now is just two, but let's assume we have 1 million. Then we have to go through this route so that we can kind of look in a row manner. So we have the look next, rather than having all our data and trying to look through it. That would be the best thing to do it, if you know. And also, if we try to use the SPLC method that we've provided, yeah, that is going to return everything, which we don't need anyways. So this is just much more granular, just like we need it. So yeah, now that we have the accounts, we want to look through the accounts. So for accounts.nest, so we are going to have the ID of int 64, I believe. Then we are going to have the, for the currency, currency of string. So we want to scan the account, so error. So when we scan into our accounts, if you understand the way Go work, automatically it's going to fill this variable with our information. So here we can now check if error is not new. So if there's an issue scanning into our account, then we can return an error like this. Okay, so could not perform scan, something like that. So now we have a variable in this particular account like that. So now we can say our account number just like we did here. So let's cut this out and bring it here. So here we can have account number equals to this. So instead of passing this, what we'll be passing will be the ID and this would be the currency, like that. So we don't need to format the account number again. So now we can have an execution flow. So an execution, we don't really need the data that is coming from it because it's an execution. So update account, set account number to $1, where ID is $2. So we are going to pass this information as a parameter. So we have the account number, which is what we are setting, and we have the ID. So again, we can check if there is an error. So if error is not new, then we can print could not update accounts. However, if everything is successful, we can say everything was successful. Or better still, we can come out of this. We are within a loop. So let's come out of this. Yeah, we can print account numbers added successfully. So. 
that's all we need for uh, our scripts. Let's now test it. So now this requires us to provide the ENV part. So let's specify it and save. Yeah, let's confirm once more if we miss anything. Okay, everything looks good. So let's run it again. All right, so as you can see, account number added successfully. So if we take a look at our DB now, and we refresh, we see that we have the two account number. So the Naira account number is starting with this, and the USD account number is starting with this, which makes sense. So before we round up with the backend, we can quickly make one update, and that is updating the account um, when we create it. So coming back to the API.go, let's close this a little bit. So let's look for account creation. This is transfer. This add money. Let's use, let's get, let's find create accounts. So here is create accounts. And here we are able to create our accounts with this information. Now that we have the account here, we need the account number. So we can have account number which is a comma error, which is equals to utils.generate account number. So we have the account ID as well as the currency. Then we check if the error is not new. So if error is not new, then we have this. And if we cannot generate an account number, then we should delete the account. Actually, this process should be within a transaction. I think this is probably something we are going to be looking to next. But for now, let's do it the manual way. So delete account. So we have this comma error. Again, we can still have error even deleting the account. So that's just one thing. So here we can have a dot server delete account. So yeah, that's quite it. If error is not new again, then there is something else entirely. Yeah. Okay, looks like we have an issue here. Oh, okay. The late account does not return. I was using the old um, query info. So yeah, we have this. So delete accounts and we are done. So now that we have the account number, we can say update account. So we can have account comma error equals to update account number. Actually should be updates accounts oh okay okay i think i see an issue so we don't have a function to update the account number yet so let's create that so we have the function to update account balance but not to up update the account number so if we come back to our db let's come down to queries accounts so here is to update the account balance so let's add to update the account number So updates account number. So we have account sets account number into dollar this, where this is this. And that's all we need to do. However, we need to add this to our list. So we have make SQL C. C. So now we can come back to the account.go, we can have the new account, comma, error, which is going to be a.server.queries update account number. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Yep, update account number params. So this takes to information. So we have the updates, db update account number params. So we have the account number, which is account number. Then we have the ID, which is account.id. Still an issue? Oh, okay. This is not needed. So this is expecting null string. So we should have, um, 
SQL dot null string. Yep, like that. So that's the information. Again, we can check for an error. So we have internal server error. We can also make all this shared, but I will ignore it. That'll be too much. But now we have an updated account. Okay. So this is where we are going to round up. We are able to kind of create our account number when we are creating an account by this method, which is not very good because this flow should be a transaction. So if we create an account and we are unable to get an account number, if there's an error, then the account should be reverted. The same thing for when we try to update the account with the account number, it should be reverted as well. So yeah, that's all we have to do here today. And I think we spent quite a number of time. So in the next episode, we are going to move to the front end and at least display our account number as a starter. Then we'll start the process of sending money. This is a series anyways, so it can take a while. You never can tell. So guys, um, that's where I'll be stopping today. See you in the next episode. And I hope you have spent more. By the way, again, if you've not subscribed, I think I will highly recommend you do so. It's going to encourage us to want to do more. All right, guys. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next episode.